Another important story today, scientists warn that a large part of Antarctica is melting and cannot be stopped. A scientific team from NASA has now warned that new data shows unstoppable melting now underway for Western Antarctica. Less well reported, members of the same team released a twin study of ice sheets at the opposite pole in Greenland. They revealed that the Greenland ice sheet, representing a potential 22 feet of sea level rise, could also be vulnerable to some of the same unstable dynamics. With 10 feet of Antarctic melt already locked in, Dr. Richard Alley, one of the world's most respected ice experts, has said that saving the Greenland ice sheet has become more important than ever. In a dark coincidence, at nearly the same moment, satellite cameras observed a multi-kilometer collapse in ice shelves on Greenland's fastest moving ice stream. Any hope of slowing Greenland's mass loss must start with a better understanding of increasing surface melt across the ice. At least part of the increased melt results from a steady darkening of the ice surface over recent decades, with a darker surface absorbing more of the sun's heat. This effect was at least partially responsible for the record surface melt in the summer of 2012. It's just remarkable um, to think of how much melting occurs here and how the, the melt fills these surface depressions with water. And they form all over the ice sheet, many thousands of them. And these have been increasing in number and in area. Lakes have been forming higher up on the inland ice sheet. Because of their dark color, they absorb sunlight. They're like big solar collectors. A dramatic event that occurs with many of the lakes is they drain abruptly, sending an enormous volume of water down into the ice sheet, spreading out at the bed, lubricating the ice sheet flow, producing dramatic, fast accelerations. We realize in the last seven years that surface melting has been increasingly the largest loss factor. So while ice flow will uh, remain an important contributor to Greenland's uh, sea level rise contribution. Uh, we, we know already that surface melting is a larger loss factor. Biologist Dr. Merrick Stiebal is studying another contributor to darkening ice. The growth of microorganisms on the surface spurred by warmer temperatures, more liquid water, and perhaps fertilization from industrial pollutants. So this is it. We have here on the surface this dark material and I used to think that this was just dust um, from the land and even from space. And, but what it really is, is mostly algae and, and they, they actually create this glue and these structures around them to protect themselves from the strong sunlight and that's a dark material. And so a lot of this darkness you see around it, it it's as much algae as it is dust. The Dark Snow Project's dual mission also includes better science communication. And last year, we succeeded in focusing mainstream media attention on the issue of Arctic warming, including major spots with NBC, HBO, and a feature by Rolling Stone writer Jeff Goodell. Wrote a big story about the consequences of sea level rise um, in Miami, and this is the place that's driving that. This is where the devastation that we're going to be seeing from sea level rise around the world is going to be coming from. It's from this melting ice in this place. So we will be gathering black carbon and algae samples from the surface of the ice sheet at the same time that we're surveying a larger area of our camp with a drone. Now we're combining the surface samples and the drone survey data with imagery from satellite that's flying overhead all simultaneously. Dark Snow 2014 camp is already in place on the Greenland sheet, but help is still needed for key elements of our science communication effort. It's easy to make a tax-deductible contribution through darksnow.org or by mail at Earth Insight Foundation, 511 Franklin Street, Wausau, Wisconsin, 54403.